You are now listening to FemRegard Podcast with Tessa Markle and Carolina Alvarez. Mmm, Fem. Hello, Fem Fam. We have another lovely guest for you. Tonight we have Victoria Nunes, who is a writer, producer, and co-founder of Hyde Hooligan Films. Welcome. Thank you for coming hey, tonight. Thank you for having me. Wait, did you just drive down from the Bay? Yeah. Like, it just happened, well, and you just, like, happened to come here? We drove down earlier. I had to drop off uh, uh, my dog to my dad, mm-hmm. and then, you know, hang out with a friend. And then, yeah. we, then we came here. <laughs> okay, so you had a Fair little enough. chill, so had a moment little too. moment. Yeah. Little yeah. Mo- well, now you're having a moment with tea with us. Tessa, what do we got right now? Right now we have Celestial Seasonings, one of our favorite brands. Um, <laughs> just, you know, shouting that out in case they want to sponsor us. Yeah, um, come on, guys. <laughs> still, no answers. No, I, I don't know. Have we hollered at them? I, no, not really. Just yeah, from a little afar. bit. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. We're trying to like... Celestial. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Um, but there's this is Country Peach Passion flavor it's nice and fruity I i'm a fan i really like this one yeah it's yeah. actually a chamomile like based tea too i just read that oh you guys so. are trying to put me to sleep okay <laughs> <'cause> chamomile <laughs> puts me to sleep <laughs> yeah all right didn't realize that before we I got drive back to it. <laughs> That's oh. like, it tastes really good though it's worth it yeah it's totally oh, good tasty. i'm glad you like yeah. it yeah because you said you're more of a coffee drinker when we ask so i was oh. like oh i hope she likes this oh no yeah tea. i'll drink tea every now and then especially mm-hmm. if i need to sleep yeah, Which, well, eventually. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> Did you have like a? Mil- I had like Red Bull and coffee today. It's been one of those days. Um, what about you on this ride? Red Bull will be on my way back home. Beautiful, because yeah. cool. I'm it's like you. Time. Red Bull's the only thing that works for me. Any? Yep. I'm just like I've... coffee is a morning thing. Red Bull's if coffee I'm, like, is breakfast tired. to me. Yeah. It doesn't really like wake me up. I don't think a lot of people realize that. To me, it's coffee too. <laughs> I get my business partner. He's just like, no, it's not a breakfast. <laughs> But it is, though. for me, it's a breakfast. I mean, yeah. it's got sugar and milk. Exactly. That's all you That's need. It's all like you cereal, need. but beans. Totally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. how I look at it. Well, oh. Victoria, tell us about um, Hyde Hooligan in general, like what you guys do, what your um, vision is for the company first, and then we'll talk about you specifically. Uh, so Hyde Hooligans is, well, it's me and my partner. Well, we've been working, uh, working together for about over six years now. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to film school, mm-hmm. so we focused a little bit on shorts. And then once we got out of that a little bit, we now we've been focusing on narratives. And that's kind of how we got into distribution, it's like okay. learning about all that back end stuff. And mm. it's just been like the past two years. I think we have, because we went to AFM last year. Mm-hmm. So we learned a lot there too. And now it's just like we've been like full on into what goes into all that stuff. And yeah. our goal is to do our future film soon. Okay. Because we already have scripts written we're working on another one and um also doing some development for a couple more nice that's kind of where we're at too like we've gotten some shorts out the next thing is either a feature or an episodic but something of that like yeah size. and i yeah. think that shorts are good to get like your bearings like mm-hmm. you know you start to learn what you're good at or exactly what you what you need it's like you start to learn and then like a future is just like a short but longer yeah. <laughs> exactly. longer longer hours longer stress a bit, like more money more, more money. development a little bit more you yeah. know things go a into bit it more everything depending on what you want to do they i mean shorts can be like that too depending on how you want to distribute a short mm-hmm. um and that all goes into what the distributor wants which is your deliverables yeah. wait hold up distribute shorts you can distribute shorts actually explica me <laughs> um I don't, I don't know what you're talking about here on netflix my partner and i were just watching a short mm-hmm. i guess they bought a short an a- short animation two minute huh. short what yeah i have to i don't remember what it was called but it's on netflix it's a short little animation nice and it's like they bought that and they distributed it on there yeah and so i don't know what the usually netflix does buyout fees Mm-hmm. so they probably bought it for a certain like flat fee mm-hmm. and right then they showcase it but apparently that's a new thing now people are doing are distributing shorts I don't, interesting oh, okay i mean so groundbreaking not, news yeah. listeners <laughs> it's not that surprising though if you think of it, like it no. makes sense like the attention yeah. spans are getting so much shorter like with youtube and stuff like that you know so it makes sense for shorts to be a thing oh, that totally would work. it's just like didn't but, know that yeah. netflix the well, yeah. to the net well like even like my it. attention span it's like mm-hmm. i don't have time to sit and invest in a series unless i have time off yeah exactly you know, i'll look for a movie that's one and a half 
two hours long, maybe. Yeah. Two hours is a little bit pushing it. <laughs> and yeah. if a short, you know, if I'm looking for a short, something that's related in my field to like, if I'm writing a story on something specific, like, like a drama and I'll watch a short that's a drama to kind of get inspired. Mm hmm. You know, it kind of helps because I'm not spending that extra time to yeah. be invested in it. You Absolutely. Know? So it's a new route. And I know, like, people have been trying to distribute shorts for a while now, but now mm -hmm. it's starting to actually gain a little bit more traction. Well, that's good news. <laughs> First yes. of all, that, I'm no, excited that to amazing. hear that. <laughs> so if you have Netflix, you should be able to just look it up shorts. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely going to look into that. I am definitely looking into that. Because I know, like, you know, Amazon has a couple on there, but Amazon is actually a platform, and I just recently learned this, that you can put your own stuff on, essentially. Like, they don't need to pick it up as, mm. like, as a distributor. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the whole process for that yet, but that's something I just recently learned. Whereas Netflix, you know, like, they have to obviously, like, approve it. They have to buy it. They have to, you know... I think it depends on how you want to distribute it. Like, mm -hmm. if you want to do self-distribution, yeah, you can go through Amazon and yeah. do self-distribution that right. way. Would, is the term called an aggregator, then? Is that the right word for it? So an aggregator would be, like, a distributor going... They're not necessarily the distributor. They're like, I'm going to buy this film from you. I'm going to buy a film from somebody else. I'm going to package mm -hmm. them together and sell it to Netflix. And okay. then they sell it in bulk. Mm -hmm. So it's not just your film; it's somebody else's, other people's films all together. Yeah, and, and you get a percentage, and you get a percentage. Okay. Um, and I was just reading up on how usually they do they do cost uh cross collateralization. Mm -hmm. Um, and you kind of want to negotiate on the fact that you don't want your film to be cross collateralized. Yeah, because if one of the films doesn't do well, then that kind of pitfall in yours. Your... Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, because it's packaged. Yeah, it's not. Oh, it's just your film. It's multiple films packaged together to one company. Yeah. Aggregators package films. They don't do specifically one film. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So they'll like go to Netflix with, here's a bunch of films. Yeah. There's okay. a good but chance that still... one of them will do well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. I totally, guys, sorry, <laughs> season one. I think I tried to talk about aggregators. We didn't, we didn't totally say it wrong. We, we just, no. We got some of it right. We got some of it right. <laughs> well, how, how was it that you guys said that? I mean, I, essentially the same process, but not the packaging part. Like, exactly. Doing yeah, just, the same thing, but yeah. So so that makes, that clears that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, aggregators just package a bunch of films, and then they buy bulk, and they sell bulk, mm -hmm. instead of just focusing on one film. Yeah. Gotcha. Like, if I just wanted to go to a distributor and be like, I want you to focus on my film in this market, that's different. That's mm -hmm. not an aggregator. That's, that's a, a distribution distributor company. Yeah. yeah. So it's diff a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Well, Thank you. Um, you were about to talk about when we stopped you to <laughs> clear all this up, <laughs> um, like deliverables. You know, what what are they looking for? What do you need to be prepared with in order to get your film out there? Uh, depends on the distribution company. Mm -hmm. They'll ask, they'll send you a list usually of what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, usually the big ones are, you know, insurance, your permits, your mm -hmm. releases. Um that's a good one. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I know I know Ian e e O is yeah. is a big one because you don't know if you missed anything. Mm -hmm. Um wait, E N O? E N O. It's his errors and omissions. It's usually in your insurance when you film, you have an insurance company, right? Correct. So that's saying like, oh, I accidentally <laughs> filmed somebody yeah. who wasn't exactly in my movie and i didn't get a release form for them uh -huh. okay it's basically a backup saying like oh they're accidentally in there they're not meant to be in there mm -hmm. you have to take record of that in that case the eno will protect you if that person decides oh that's my face like so it's I, an insurance I, I, policy against it essentially yeah if that okay happen. yeah so that's a big one um you they will ask for marketing materials um depending how much you have Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good to start in development, start thinking about what your market is and how you would market to that, whatever your, whoever your audience is. Um, that goes for posters, trailers, BTS, anything mm -hmm. that you have. Um, Press releases, mm -hmm. write-ups, anything like that. Yeah, right? or if you've been reaching out to uh, magazine companies yeah. and stuff like mm -hmm. that, trying to get your stuff out there. Interesting. Yeah. So I wanted to... Um... And we'll talk more about distribution and stuff too, but just real quick, I wanted to talk about like you personally, like what got you into entertainment in general and like what is like what's your kind of day to day with that and where do you see yourself going? Like what's your ultimate goal? I'm just curious, you know, we're always curious about everyone's journey and everyone's <laughs> story. Yeah, well, well, I've always been artsy. 
Mm -hmm. like ever since I was small. Like I was big into drawing. Mm -hmm. Like that was my thing. I was drawing. I was into anime. So I drew a lot of like anime characters. I got into creating my own stories all throughout my whole like school career. TBT. (laughs) Yeah, stuff like that. I was drawing that stuff all the time. And when I went to college, I had the choice between film and animation. Mm -hmm. And I chose film because I didn't want to spend 12 hours in front of a uh, computer. That's understandable. (laughs) You know, I spent so many hours just, even at night, just drawing all the time. And I first got introduced to film my senior year of high school. Okay. And it was kind of interesting. And that's what made me decide on doing film as my um, major. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... I did cool. that. <laughs> and no, then this is so fascinating. Like, yeah. you know, from drawing to then creating. Like, did yeah. you want to do, like, like kind of like an anime at some point? Because that's what you grew up with and had a passion for? Yeah, I I, I had that. Um, I used to draw with a couple of friends. We used to have our own little storyline. So mm-hmm. I'm used to story creating and story creations and stuff yeah. like that. Um. Yeah, I think I honed a lot more better after <laughs> film school and stuff like that. It's like learning, like, um, Save the Cat is a good uh, book to read mm-hmm. to learn your story structure. I, yeah. Got it. It's I think my, we've shot my that backpack. Out. Yeah, on the show <laughs> as before. we speak. <laughs> yeah, we listen to the audio book just to make it go so by. Yeah. go by so much faster, especially yeah. when we drive down the LA and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. I, I've switched a lot from being creative to more producing logistics mm-hmm. and stuff like that and it's completely completely opposite now <laughs> yeah so now i'm very fascinated by all the contracts i'm fascinated by all the distribution stuff and yeah it's not that i don't draw as like i used to but i still do but it's more of my you're hobby. like i'm a businesswoman now What's <laughs> up? i like it yeah you know, a lot of people yeah. don't enjoy it as much i enjoy it because i like figuring out the logistics of like oh that doesn't make sense or this sounds better for your, you know, contract to have this in it, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's stuff that I really enjoy. Yeah. So did you like Problem study solving. contracts to like get like the because there's specific lingo like or do you still like have an entertainment like lawyer tied with that? I think you should always have an entertainment lawyer. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Just to but be just safe. like I how think... did you familiarize? I mean, just from reading. I'm guessing. Yeah. Like, how did that, you like, learn everything about this world? Yeah, so I got in, I started getting into it um, my senior thesis at college, mm-hmm. and I just was reading contracts, and I had a entertainment lawyer as a teacher. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's nice. So I would go and ask her, be like, is this okay if I put this in here? Yeah. She'd be like, yeah, that's fine, you know, as a, like, backup if something were to happen with the actor, you mm-hmm. know. Um, so I learned a little bit from that. I learned a little bit of language, because lawyers, like, rewording things for a certain (laughs) way um absolutely i had a really great mentor here in um actually northern la Mm -hmm. and he's he's been really helpful he's i'll talk to him every now and then too and he's like helps me with mentoring still on some things that are like oh it's like how do i word that correctly to make sure that it's okay with the talent's agent and right. still okay with our company, you know? Yeah. Because they'll do they'll do red lines. The lawyers will do red lines and be like, I don't like the way this sounds. <laughs> Reword yeah. this, you know? <laughs> totally. Um, so I used to read a lot of contracts. And I and I still do. Um, I have a book on contracts that Ooh, I've had for share. a while. What is it? I've had it for a while. <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. Once yeah. I know what it was called, I'll send you the Okay, the please. Books. <laughs> please, and we'll, and we'll share it, it with out. you guys. Yeah, yeah, we will. It is a very cut Tessa's and dry new book. bedtime story. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, it's good. So one of the things I've been trying to do, and, and my partner has been telling me, it's um, reading something informational before you go to bed. Mm-hmm. You know, so it just sits absorbs, there. Yeah, absorbs you know. as you're sleeping. That's what I do so all been day. Doing that. Trigonometry at night. <laughs> oh man, the, just kidding. <laughs> I hope it sits in. <laughs> just kidding. I would pray that that sits in. <laughs> but like you know, you wake up in the morning and usually you want something more creative to get your yeah. day started. And it's like I'll, I'll listen to podcasts, I like scary stories and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, always. Yeah. So it's like the first thing I listen to in the morning, or or I'll, I'll read a book. You know, if I have the time. <laughs> the audio books are yeah, where it's at. Audio books. The audiobooks for me are good for informational books. Yes, like if I'm reading hundred percent, hundred percent. Because I will not focus on a non-fictional book. Yeah, I used to read like crazy throughout high school and college. I just would carry like three books with me and just read like crazy. Yeah, yeah, and I just feel like 
I would reread books like Jurassic Park. I'll reread it and be like, oh, I missed that the first time. And, uh, totally. And I just like, reread Lord of the Rings. Like I'm obsessed with it. And I just reread it now for the first time since I was like a kid. Uh-huh. And that was such a great experience. I Aww. loved rereading them. See, I've been wanting to read those books for a long time right now. You've never read them at all? No. Oh, I highly recommend. <laughs> I have The Hobbit, though. I got okay. through a chunk of The Hobbit. Yeah. Because I really love those movies. Like, yeah. I will just sit there and watch them all day long. Totally. Yeah. But I mean, right now I'm reading Fahrenheit 451. Oh, so I love that book. I'm just really enjoying that. Love it. So um, let's talk just a little bit about... um. Like, what are the first kind of steps for people for distribution? Like, if somebody is coming to you for like, hey, what do I do to get this out there? Like, what would you tell them is, are the first kind of steps along the way? Um, I think it would be reaching out to a distributor. I've been talking about this for a long time for people, you know, filmmakers in the Bay Area up north. Um, and it's really based on your film. Mm-hmm. You know what genre it is. Uh. It's really, you want to find a distributor that fits that, your film. Yeah. Like, you don't want to have a faith-based film and then go to a horror distributor and be like, hey, can you sell this? Yeah. <laughs> you right. know, because nobody's going to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa. I think yeah. it'd be a lot worse. Right. Yeah. You know? And 100%. It, you really want to make sure that the person you're going to, the distributor you're going to, is the right fit for your for your movie. Mm-hmm. And then you would reach out to them. Um, if you have a completed project, the film markets are a great place to hit up Mm -hmm. because you can try to schedule meetings with them. I think it's the first three days they're usually looking to buy. Okay. Companies are usually looking to buy. And if you buy your ticket, um, I think it's a four day pass. You get access to the app. And so you can reach out to people there and try to schedule meetings. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So very curious about the, that whole process specifically. So let's say, you know, you get your first meeting. You're super excited. Mm. What do you bring to the table? What is what would you bring to the table? Like, it is it kind of like a pitch deck situation? Like, do you come scenario? with your deliverables that early? In like, that, or no. okay, you don't come with your deliverables. They'll give you a in the contract. They'll tell you, I'll send you in the next couple of days what the deliverables are. Okay, and then you need to send all that stuff back, and it's within a certain time limit, and you should really read the contract Mm -hmm. um because if if you're late (laughs) sometimes they'll tag on uh late fees if you're late with the deliverables you know okay yeah um so you really want to read your contract i think the first step would be you get the meeting you pitch them your story Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. show them something like a trailer or something that's going to interest them that you know yeah you would suggest a visual of some sort yeah so sell if you go to Asylum and you have a horror film, you know, you would show like something that's going to pique their interest or something that's related to them that usually things that they sell. They sell yeah. stuff like what? Sharknado. Yeah. So, <laughs> something. If I have a trailer for something like Shark Swamp or something yeah. like that. Right? right. If I go to them and be like, oh, this is their style. Right. You know, and I show them a trailer and they're interested in it, you know. Right. You could start, you know kind of feeling out they're interested in buying that mm-hmm. um usually they'll say they're interested and they'll ask you they'll do a follow-up meeting and then um there's a preliminary contract that says that you're going to be doing this mm-hmm. and then they send you the real contract okay okay once you feel like you want to go through it go through it with that okay. i think one of the things though too is that when you're when you're trying to sell your film you don't want to go just to one area Mm-hmm. Like if you feel like if you feel like Asylum would be good for distributing film through cable, yeah, that's one specific area. Okay, but if you don't feel like they would do well in distributing your film online, mm-hmm. and I wanted to go to Netflix, that's another area. Mm-hmm. So pay cable is a different distribution um, route. Yeah, and VOD is another. Okay, so you don't want to give Asylum all your rights, all exclusive rights, if you can go to Netflix and get a better deal for your VOD sales. Right. Does that make sense? No, that totally okay. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, this is what we're learning, too, is that it's it's not just one distribution model. It's not just one distribution route. Like, even if you're doing, like, kind of the, the classic distribution model, depending on where you're putting it out, like, it's all, yeah, it's all different. It's, a, it's called split rights deal. Mm-hmm. So you want to split up the rights if you know 
certain people in certain markets that are going to hit that market yeah. better than, say, somebody in the U.S., you know? Yeah. If I know somebody in the U.S. is going to hit the U.S. really well, mm-hmm. like, I know Warner Brothers is going to hit the U.S. really well, you know, but I don't know if they're going to do well in China or something right. like that. I'll go to somebody else who's going to do well in China. Totally, because you've you got to get it out there as much, like, everywhere that you can. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. Totally. Yeah, and I think also, too, it's like you want to make sure in your contract that you have the right to look at yeah. If they, if your distributor decides to do a sub distribution, mm-hmm. so your distributor will buy your rights, then they'll go and sell your rights to another distributor, mm-hmm. and hit up another market, okay, underneath them, and you then wanna, you want to make sure you get a cut of whatever that is. Yeah, <laughs> because right. yeah, you want to make sure everything's clean there because sometimes right. the main distributor will try to do like a stacking fee and they'll take a cut from this one and then from their own fee as well and then send you whatever's left over yeah (laughs) Mm. yeah you gotta try to make the most money you can (laughs) yeah well that's good to know like there's like they have their own sub like i didn't know they would there's sub distribution within that yeah that's why that you always need to read your contract that's why i say it's great to have an entertainment lawyer because they're gonna notice that stuff Mm -hmm. i only notice that stuff because i read a lot of that yeah stuff. <laughs> not very many producers are gonna be like i'm not just i noticed that you know totally so before we wrap up um i want our listeners to be able to find you to find your projects um if they want to work with you all that kind of stuff so if you want to share like your website for hide hooligan and any personal like social media all that kind of stuff uh yeah uh so our website is uh hide hooligan um you can probably search our hashtag hide hooligans on Instagram and awesome. Facebook and Twitter. So mm-hmm. You can easily find us on there. So hide hooligans. We have individual accounts because okay. I go by hooligan V. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the little secret code name. Nice. Um, you can search up hooligan V uh, through hashtag to find me through there. Um, my partner has is Jay hooligan. If you want to find his. Awesome. He's more directing, creative. Okay. I'm more writer, producer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, and then you guys can email us through our website. Usually, it goes straight to our email, so we can respond like in the next couple of days. Perfect. Perfect. Well, listeners, definitely check them out. And Victoria, thank you so much for coming on today. It was awesome Making to talk to you. Journey. You drove all the way from NorCal for us. I yeah. feel honored. <laughs> yeah, I thank mean, that's a long drive, guys, if you don't know. <laughs> but this was like, this was super helpful. Like I, we had talked about, you know, we had yeah. someone on the, to talk about distribution before, but it's like you learn every time you talk to anyone that knows what they're talking about with distribution, you learn something new every time. So. There's just so much to it. Yeah. Like, so much you, ground to cover. Honestly, so. Just research online. There's a lot of free stuff that you guys mm-hmm. can research. Just research um film distribution. You can find articles and stuff like that. I'll probably send you the article that I read. Oh, fantastic! Please. So you guys have access to that. You guys can put that up as well for everybody. Yeah, um, Love I'll send that you the girl. book if I find the book. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Boo. Whatever that book is, <laughs> the article definitely. I know I have the article book. You know, okay. bookmarked. So. Perfect. I'll send Yay. you that. Well, yeah. thank you again well, thank so you. much, and thank you, listeners. We love you guys. We do, and we'll we see you next time. Thanks for listening to Femme Regard Podcast. If you like what you hear, tune in next time for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals over tea. We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and give us a five-star review on Apple Podcast. If you leave us a great comment, we might give you a shout-out on the show. For more on us, check us out at femregard.com.